Well, LeBron James has finally done it. No, he hasn't won an actual legitimate NBA title yet. As we are still breathlessly awaiting the first one of those in 21 years now and counting. But he has scored some arbitrary amount of points in his never-ending quest to become basketball's GOAT, a designation he continues to fall hilariously short of despite all of those stats. Speaking of which, on Saturday night, he finally reached a goal that took 21 years of stat padding on predominantly all layups and dunks to realize, while flopping and whining all over the court, 40,000 points. The first in league history. The milestone comes predictably in a loss at home to a Nuggets team with a hobbled Jamal Murray. But yeah, 40,000. And what exactly about his legacy does this change? Oh sure, in today's day and age, there are a plethora of corrupt media sycophants who have been jock sniffing and disseminating the LeBron propaganda for over two decades and counting now. And of course, there are his ignorant and delusional fan base, the vast majority of which know absolutely nothing about any other era outside of this one. They will no doubt be on a never-ending siege to inundate every square inch of your social media feeds with worthless LeBron counting stats and metrics as they endlessly pleasure themselves to these hollow box score stats, along with the unabashed fanboys masquerading around as journalists, touting some tired and laughable fake goat case. A case which is constructed on a house of cards atop a foundation of unparalleled longevity and durability. But if you really dig into the context of LeBron's career, you cannot escape the fact that these longevity metrics have come in the face of an era of undeniable statistical enhancement, with league-wide scoring experiencing a meteoric rise over the course of LeBron's 21-year career. With nightly averages in his rookie season of 2003-2004 at just 93.4 points per game, which is the lowest since the 1976 ABA-NBA merger. But those nightly scoring averages have shot all the way up to 115.2 this season, which is the highest in modern NBA history. A result of the NBA's strategic assault on defense, litigating competition on that end of the floor out of the sport since the early 2000s. Though this was likely the trajectory of the NBA, regardless of what the league offices did. As this new generation of players started replacing their predecessors, a crop of soft, entitled losers that can't be bothered to strain themselves defensively, and in general lack the level of competitiveness that defined the eras that came before them. Free movement around the court and to the basket came with almost no impediments as the years have gone by throughout LeBron's career. And this is a point of vital importance to the bagless one, LeBron James, who despite all of his scoring accomplishments, has still displayed a relatively minuscule skill set, something that was apparent in his first seven years in Cleveland when he shot 68% from five feet and in to the basket, while he made just under 36% from beyond five feet. And averaging it out for those first seven seasons in Cleveland, LeBron was shooting just 47.5% from the field overall, a number which has increased significantly for the remainder of his career. From the 2011 season, his first in Miami, spanning all the way to the 2024 league year, his most recent, James is now shooting nearly 52.5% from the field during that time. That is five percentage points higher than his first seven seasons with the Cavaliers. Now I know what you're thinking. This must just be because LeBron has been improving his game and getting better at his craft. Well, you may be thinking that, but you'd be wrong. 
Actually, it just means LeBron has had to systematically surround himself with the perfect assortment of players in order to space the floor to a point where defenses were incapable of clogging the lane. And aiding him on this front, of course, was the aforementioned changing dynamic of the league and dwindling defensive effort levels in general, which started taking effect right around that 2012 NBA season. This ensured LeBron the ability to make more easy shots from five feet and in to the basket. And for his 21 year career now, LeBron James has attempted 11,586 of his 29,027 career shots from within five feet of the basket, which is just about 40% of his total shots attempted. And on those such shot attempts, he has a field goal percentage of nearly 71%. While to date, he has made just over 37% of all shots outside of 5 feet. 37%. Essentially on any shot other than a layup or dunk. Yet we are perpetually inundated with these narratives of the alleged efficiency of LeBron James. But DeAndre Jordan has the highest career shooting percentage in NBA history at 67.5%, and he also has the highest effective field goal percentage, while Rudy Gobert has the highest true shooting percentage in league history. All the while, the alleged greatest shooter ever, Steph Curry, is not top five in any of those metrics. But of course, we have to factor in the difficulty level of the shot attempts that Steph Curry is taking versus the kinds of shots Rudy Gobert and DeAndre Jordan are taking. But for some reason, the context of LeBron James's scoring is never factored in. Being the all-time leading scorer in NBA history or reaching 40,000 career points does not necessarily make one the greatest scorer. In fact, James has only led the league in scoring one time in 21 years. He isn't top five in most career 40, 50, or 60 point games. What this scoring milestone does mean is that he has experienced unparalleled durability and longevity required to reach these scoring thresholds. And there sure has been a lot of uh, speculation as to the ways LeBron has allegedly attained this level of durability with Kevin Garnett becoming just the most recent high-profile personality to level some accusation against James, saying that LeBron is on that, quote, new juice. While recently unredacted federal documents pertaining to the 2013 biogenesis steroid scandal has implicated LeBron James's longtime friend and business partner, Ernest Randy Mims, as a customer of the clinic. Also implicated in the documents was David Alexander, who served as LeBron's and LeBron's wife's personal trainer during James's stint in Miami. Nothing to see here though, just coincidences. Not coincidentally, however, despite all of these points, LeBron never really could figure out how to score them when it mattered most. Taking a look at his performances during clutch time in the NBA Finals round, defined as the final two minutes of a one possession game. And James falls substantially short of the standard set by actual winners that have populated this sport's history. With LeBron shooting just eight of 29 through his career in these situations, that's 27 and a half percent. Meanwhile, his teams in these games have an overall record of just 10 and 11, a major reason why LeBron has won only four of his 10 finals appearances. Which gets us to the crux of the matter here. While LeBron may well have all of the counting stats, when exactly did those really start mattering? Certainly not when Larry Bird, who is 39th on the all-time scoring list, retired. And they haven't ever been used against Magic Johnson, who is 85th on that same list. 
while Will Chamberlain dwarfs the statistical output of Bill Russell throughout the 60s, yet Russell is routinely considered to be the superior player. No one is touting Elvin Hayes as a better player than Tim Duncan. The Big E, of course, who has more total points and rebounds than Duncan while averaging more per game in both metrics. Finally, Carl Malone is third all-time in scoring and seventh in rebounds, yet we never hear his name mentioned amongst the pantheon of Mount Rushmore level bigs. Does anyone really care that Russell Westbrook is the modern day Oscar Robertson and averaged a triple double in four full seasons, which is three more than every other basketball player combined in all of NBA history? At the end of the day, it's not about counting the stats, it's about owning the moments. And all of the other historical greats who are routinely discussed in the GOAT conversation have mastered that. While the career successes of the self-proclaimed king in the moments that really matter will always be outnumbered by his failures.